Do you find it hard to say no even when you know it's the right thing to do? Let's talk about the power of this two-letter word. Saying no is not just about rejecting a request, it's about maintaining personal boundaries and safeguarding your mental health. It's about creating equilibrium in your life, a balance that allows you to lead a fulfilling existence. Saying no can be the difference between feeling overwhelmed and feeling empowered. So, how do we get comfortable with saying no? The first step is to confront your fear of saying no. Now this fear can take many forms. It might be a fear of conflict, a fear of being disliked, or even a fear of missing out on opportunities. But here's the thing, these fears are often misplaced. Let's confront them together, shall we? Fear of conflict can arise because we associate saying no with confrontation. However, saying no doesn't have to be confrontational. It can simply be a way of setting boundaries. Next, the fear of being disliked. We all want to be liked, don't we? But remember, saying no doesn't make you less likable. In fact, it can lead to increased respect from others, as they recognize your ability to prioritize and make decisions. Then there's the fear of missing out. But it's crucial to understand that saying no to one thing often means saying yes to something more important. Once you confront these fears, you're ready to start practicing. The next step is to start practicing saying no. Imagine saying no as an art, an art that requires practice. So, let's dive into some practical strategies that can help you master this art. First off, assertiveness is key. When you say no, say it confidently. Your no should be firm yet gentle, not aggressive. Think of it as stating a fact rather than starting a fight. It's not about causing conflict but about standing up for your needs and boundaries. Now you might be wondering, what if they ask me why? Well, offering an explanation can be helpful, but remember it's not obligatory. It's okay to say no without a detailed justification. However, if you choose to provide an explanation, keep it simple and truthful. There's no need to concoct elaborate excuses. A simple, I'm not available at that time or I have prior commitments is usually enough. Next, start practicing in low-stakes situations. Say no to that extra slice of cake you don't really want. Decline that movie night when you'd rather stay in and read. These situations may seem trivial but they are perfect for practicing your no without the fear of significant consequences. Repetition and consistency are crucial. The more you say no, the more comfortable you'll become with it. It's like learning to ride a bicycle. At first you might wobble and fall but with practice you'll gain balance and speed. Keep in mind saying no doesn't mean you're a bad person or a selfish one. It means you're taking care of yourself, setting boundaries and prioritizing your needs. It's a sign of self-respect and strength not weakness. So, the next time you're tempted to say yes when you really want to say no, remember these strategies. Use them as your guide in navigating the often tricky landscape of interpersonal relationships. And above all remember this, saying no is a skill and like any skill it can be honed with practice. Remember practice makes perfect. When you start saying no, you might face some pushback. It's a natural reaction when people are not used to hearing you set boundaries. They may feel surprised, disappointed, or even upset. But remember, their reactions are more about their expectations, not your worth. Handling pushback effectively is a skill that can be cultivated. The first step is to remain calm and composed. Responding with anger or defensiveness can escalate the situation and weaken your resolve. Instead, communicate your decision with respect and understanding. It's also important to remember that you don't need to justify your reasons to everyone. You are not obligated to explain why you're saying no. Your time, energy and resources are yours to manage. However, if you feel the need to explain, do so in a concise manner. Use phrases like, I have other commitments, or, this doesn't align with my priorities right now. This approach is effective and respectful. Now let's talk about maintaining your boundaries. It's one thing to set them, and quite another to uphold them, especially in the face of resistance. But standing your ground is crucial for your self-respect and well-being. It may be uncomfortable at first, but stay firm and consistent. Remember, saying no is not about being difficult or selfish, it's about respecting yourself and your needs. It's about making conscious choices instead of automatic commitments. With time and practice, saying no will become second nature. Learning to say no is an essential skill for self-improvement and mental health. Remember, we've talked about confronting the fear, the power of saying no, and how to deal with pushback. Start practicing this skill, it's easier than you think, and with time, it'll become second nature. So go ahead, give yourself that permission. Prioritize your mental health and don't be afraid to say no when you need to. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more self-improvement tips. Remember, it's okay to say no.